Well, there have been some absolutely amazing ventures in space in the past few months. Oh, oh. The incredible missions into low Earth orbit by Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and the intriguing moves up there by Richard Branson, too. And then, of course, at Christmas, we all heard about the launch of NASA's James Webb Telescope, which is said to be even bigger and better than the amazing Hubble Telescope, looking further into deep space and ultimately looking for life out there. Well, we've seen over the past few days how it's unfolded. It's giant gold mirrors. It's going to be months before it starts to deliver. It's got to cool down to, I think, minus 230 Celsius before it'll work properly. So how is the space programme itself unfolding and what happens next? Well, let's ask someone who really knows because she has been an integral part of the NASA story since 1978 when she was recruited as one of the first female astronauts and she's clocked up some 192 hours in space and she was the first ever mother in space. Oh yes, let's join Anna Lee Fisher from her home in Houston, Texas. It is such a joy to talk to you. Thanks for joining us on GB News. First and foremost, and I've got to ask, what is it like to leave this planet? I mean, I know it's a question you must have been asked a thousand times, but, but that journey itself, actually heading into orbit, must be exhilarating and yet terrifying, isn't it? Probably both. <laughs> yes, it's definitely. But um, getting the opportunity to go into space is just, it, words just... Uh, Believe me, you don't have enough words to explain just how wonderful it is. I'm so excited about all the new things that are happening. Perhaps more people will have the opportunity to get to to see that amazing view that we've had the privilege to see. It's, it's really uh, an amazing, almost surreal experience. And as we said there, you were the first mother in space. And to go up there on your first mission, you had to kiss your little girl goodbye. We just saw a love, that lovely picture. Um, and then you go and sit on what is essentially an enormous explosive. Um, you must have been, you must have been, even though despite your training, you must have been frightened and worried that uh, you may never see your daughter again. Well, anyone who um, certainly sits on the shuttle, um, I can't speak for some of the more recent rockets, but I think pretty much for any rocket to say that you're not afraid, um, they're probably not telling you the truth. And certainly I thought over all those things, but space exploration and the honor that I had in being in the first group of women, um, I never second guessed my decision uh, that I wanted to go into space and be an astronaut. And I also wanted to be a mom. And um, I guess you just hope that everything's going to work out OK in the end and, and trust all those amazing people working on all that hardware uh, to make it as safe as possible. I mean, the, t the time when you were flying on, on the shuttle, I mean, it, it seemed to be like the sort of golden age of space travel, if you like, and things have quietened mm -hmm. off. But we are picking up again, aren't we? I mean, what, what do you make of, of the Artemis program? Oh, I, um, I agree with you that there was kind of the, well, there's several golden ages, actually. You know, Apollo was an amazing <laughs> time as well. And I really think the shuttle era uh, was, a, was another golden age. Um, and I think now that we're coming on, a, a, on to a very new age, and it's very interesting to see how all of this is going to work out with the um, Elon Musk's and Jeff Bezos and uh, Virgin Galactic. It's it, it, it's very exciting. I think the Artemis program um, is going to be equally amazing. I mean, we want to go back to the moon now and not just go there and, and get some specimens of moon rocks, but actually go build a lunar base and live there, learn how to live on another body away from Earth uh, in preparation, of course, for going to Mars. So I think it's really exciting. If, you know, if I were given a choice, which era would you choose? It would be really hard. I mean, I love being part of the shuttle program, but to be able to go to the moon and go to Mars, I think people in my group are shocked, you know, when we first were selected, I think we thought by now we would have already been to Mars. So um, I don't know, they're all exciting. Uh, space exploration is exciting. Just being a part of it and the teamwork and everything is, is amazing. So each program has its um, pluses and minuses. 
working on the Orion spacecraft, haven't you? Which is the one that will hopefully take us to Mars. Um, and you've been developing mm -hmm. things all the way along the line. Obviously, as an astronaut, you know, your, your mission was to go up into space. But I know we saw a lovely picture of you earlier where, with, with the first uh, intake of, of female astronauts. And uh, you were alongside this enormous spacesuit that was clearly a man's spacesuit. And you had to actually mm -hmm. design spacesuits for smaller people. Well, I was... Um I was involved in testing, find, trying to find a spacesuit to actually get the shuttle spacesuit because that design was so far along at that point that we could not uh, have really changed it. To get it to fit someone smaller like me, we weren't really successful with that, but we're now in the process of, of a new suit design, and I'm very hopeful that the next suit uh, will uh, allow the smaller people and also the extra large suit. Originally, the shuttle suit was going to be extra small to extra large. Eventually, they found that that was pretty difficult and also extremely expensive. So they decided that if you wanted to do a spacewalk, you had to fit in the medium or the large suit. Um, but, but we're in the process now of the next generation suit, and hopefully um, this time we'll be able to find one to fit the smaller people like me. I mean, in, in terms of, I mean, of, of developing all these areas of, of space travel, whether it's the, the, the rockets or the suits or, or all the technology involved, how important is it? I mean, does it, has it made a difference that things have obviously shifted away from NASA to the private sector to a certain degree? Does that, has that changed the, the, the pace of development? Well, it's definitely different. <laughs> um, I... Uh, I must admit that I'm surprised when I first heard, you know, that Elon Musk was coming up with his concept of SpaceX, say, about 10 years ago, um, I was extremely doubtful that that would be successful. And when NASA picked the two contenders, Boeing with their Starliner and uh, SpaceX with their Dragon um, to be the next generation to take astronauts to the space station, I think I would have put all my money on Boeing and certainly not on SpaceX, but I was wrong. SpaceX has been, uh, has very much surprised me and I think all of us. And so I think just bringing in other ideas, other, uh, other companies, um, I, I think everybody is excited about going into space and we can maybe, just like when we did our partnership with the Russians for the International Space Station. Um, we learned on many things from them and they from us. And I think the same thing is happening now with our commercial partners um, that we're benefiting from th learning different ways. I think SpaceX is benefiting from working with NASA and learning about some of our very strong attention to detail. And I think we're perhaps learning from them about um, other ways of doing things perhaps quicker. So I think it's a beneficial a relationship and I'm I'm really excited by how the program is progressing now and how um, I mean right now we're on crew three that's on board the International Space Station um, and and they were able to do that in the middle of COVID uh, to have the first uh, uh, manned launch um, on SpaceX so I, I'm very impressed with how NASA and our our commercial partners are working together. Yeah, it must be very encouraging for you, because I know at one point there was one time, I think you said in an interview when somebody asked you, what should a would be astronaut do? And you said, learn how to speak Russian, uh, which which gave everybody the impression that you were, frankly, uh, you know, um, worried that, uh, you know, NASA wasn't doing as well as it used to. But suddenly we're hearing so much more coming from America now. And well, that comment was based on the fact that for almost a decade, we launched on a Russian Soyuz. And so, you know, if you're going to be launching on a Soyuz, you want to be able to speak Russian well. So that was the basis of that comment. But no, I, I, I am so proud that we are now launching um, astronauts from U.S. soil. But we continue to also fly on the Soyuz and be with our partners uh, on the International Space Station. So the comment about learning Russian is still probably a valid one, but I'm very proud that we're now able uh, to launch from U.S. soil, U.S. astronauts from U.S. soil. Anna, what would you say to those people who are 
still sort of sceptical about space travel, where there's, you know, there's a lot of problems on the planet, as we know. And, and there are those people who say, well, should we be heading into, into space? And Prince William was one of them, yeah, wasn't he, yeah, really? He actually um, was, yeah. But, I mean, what, what do we learn from space? What, what are the benefits to the, to the planet from, from venturing outside the atmosphere? Oh, my goodness. You know, I, I always find it hard to, say, sell the space program based on the things that we have learned from it. But, my gosh, we've gotten so many wonderful things from um, the computers that we have, telemetry for medicine. Um, there's just so many benefits that we gain from it. But for me, the reason to go into space is, is there are many reasons, but space exploration, I think human nature just wants to explore the unknown and um, also preservation of our species. Uh, you know, what happened to the dinosaurs? And so I think we need to learn how to go beyond our planet um, to preserve our species, but the, and, and, and also um, inspiring young people to study at STEM fields. Not everybody's going to be an astronaut per se, but um, you're, there's so many amazing careers and so many wonderful discoveries that come as a result of space exploration. And again, I would also say, just like in your family budget, you need to um, pay for your food and your your, your lodging and all those sorts of things. But you also have to uh, pay for your future. You save for your retirement and so forth. And I think the same thing's true with a national budget. You know, you, you have to take care of health care and, and all the many things that we have to deal with. But you also have to look to your future. And to not invest in that would, uh, I think, be foolish. When you're up there in orbit looking down on Earth. What's the first thing you look for? I presume where you live. You look for where you live. But um, what are the other things that strike you about just looking at Earth? Oh, it's just, that's my one regret on my flight was that I didn't study geography as much as I wish I had, because you will look, yes, you're right. The first thing you look at is your home. And, and then, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles. So looking at that, but then beyond that, you know, you'll be looking out the window and you'll see a mountain or you'll see a lake or a river. And back when we flew, uh, we didn't have all the support software that the current astronauts have. So you weren't going to ask over the um, air to ground, you know, oh, I just passed over a lake. What was that lake? <laughs> but, uh, you know, things like that. It, it's just it's just so much fun to look over the out the window and see just the I mean, the planet is just incredible. The colors in the Caribbean, the it, it's just an it's just such an amazing view. And um, the people who've been on the International Space Station have been up there for like six months. Um, the view out the window becomes almost like their backyard. They mm. they become so familiar. You you can look out and, and almost immediately know you know where you are, even without looking at the world map and everything. It's a it's just an incredible experience. You know what, Annalie Fisher. I could talk to you, we could talk to all you day. all day long. It is such a joy to have you on the programme.